What excited me most about getting to do the Elven pieces was that I could make more accessories that went along with the ruined themes. Michelle does these unbelievable, meticulous details. Like that's her, what, her specialty. Like she goes in with a sewing needle and is doing these tiny little details. It gave me a chance to do more of the fancy work that I adore. The Odyssey of the Elven Reliquary is the longest of all of them. Every time we thought we had it, there was like another twist and turn. When we were initially doing our design concepting, I kind of incorporated having a lot of little details like the knot work. And then I'm also looking at some of the designs from the Elven Ruins. Some of the most uh, frustrating, infuriating pieces to figure out ended up being some of my favorites in the end. The ruin scheme was the first terrain sector scheme that I developed, so I pulled the majority of it from that. But when I tried to apply some of the accents from that, we did some kind of glowing green on some of the pole accessories and that kind of thing, and it was just a little too garish. There were some surprising decisions that ended up working out better. It really can be draining to stare at a piece for hours and hours, and you kind of become detached from it, and you don't know the journey that it's been on. The composition of all the pieces together really informs each individual piece. They were also uh, very cohesive in the development of each other. For the Arcane Ages, we wanted something that really surrounded the die. Because we loved the arch in the hero piece, I wanted to bring those in to our Elven throne. The kind of twirly, squirrely patterns and stuff on the steps is also in the arms of the throne style. I just loved how the energy all sort of focuses down into that well for the die to sit in. This used to be white. We did all the violet here, and of course this repeats across the whole thing. It was kind of just how much accent do we put? Is it too much? Is it cohesive across all of them, especially at the main views? There's white on both of them, but they're not as apparent on the front view where they'd be displayed. That's why we cut back, for example, this white accent. Of the three pieces, this was the last one that I did. We didn't want to have too many solid or straight lines in it, so this one has a lot more of a curve for the stand itself. Uh, one thing that I did do for all of these is this pattern around the bottom ring. Once you have a color scheme that often started with the hero, you get excited about it and start placing a lot of colors in a lot of places. So this guy is where I sort of discovered uh, white on the rim, like this is such a cool pattern, I gotta do the coolest, flashiest thing on it, when really it turned out we liked just putting a really clean white on there. It exists on Ruins Axe, Sense, and it worked well here, especially because we found some nice areas to put the other colors that didn't stick out too much. The hero piece for the Hel Elven set started off pretty small. This piece here was first, and it's greatly influenced the, the other two pieces that go in this set. She pretty quickly got the core sculpt together and we, we thought we were in great shape. The other heroes ended up getting really big. Suddenly look back at the elven hero, this mystic crescent, and it just didn't have the same presence. We ended up adding the base and the extra wings to give it a more epic feel. So she put on this base with these unbelievably detailed carvings. So then we thought we had it. And the hero has like a very distinct shape. So once you put it in the middle of the seven die array, it felt like it was empty. So with Heavy Heart went back to Michelle, I was like, can we add something to it? And she went back in and added these wings and found a way to make it work. Now it's just this unbelievably striking silhouette. So basically I added some brand new beauty, thinking that this is sort of the centerpiece of what used to be the Kalantir architecture that is now ruined in the Wildlands. And so when we came up with the colors, we liked the scheme, but the challenge was finding the placement. So we liked the gold, which was kind of a surprising because it is a warmer color to contrast with the cool. We had to get a little selective of where we placed the separation. We loved all the details on these little vignettes. There used to be a lot more or fewer areas of the violet interference, but once we hit the colors themselves, we liked sort of the palette, and uh, the biggest design challenge then was just where to place them, how much area does each color cover, then we got magic. That's one of the more exciting things, is getting to see 
these dull gray or brown sculpts getting turned into this living color. The way that the dice sits on top of the hero, anytime we shine a light through the back of them, it would be like ding, sparkle, sparkle. When it came to the actual setup, the way that we had the unending dusk purples and yellows set up in the background, using like a bunch of the ruins and then also mixing in with Elven, it felt to me a lot like Heldrassil in World of Warcraft with all the night elves. And I really enjoyed it for, you know, nostalgia purposes. It's great to have those people that add to the excitement and everyone ha puts their touch on it and we see the photography and the video and the graphics of it. It's like, I forget all the stress. I'm like, this is just so cool and it, and it looks cool with everything else that everyone is working on. That's the most rewarding part of it.